presentation today I want to um, review an issue which uh, has come up quite frequently and that is that of uh, EEPROM training. Um, if you uh, peruse the internet or peruse YouTube um, you'll find a, a variety of uh, videos and video fragments on EEPROM training or EEPROMs or what is an EEPROM or uh, whatever somebody feels is appropriate to describe EEPROM. Well, EEPROM is a memory device, memory type of memory device, um, unlike at the earlier version of memory part called an EEPROM. The EEPROM -E stands for Electrically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory, or EEPROM stood for Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. And in order to erase an EEPROM, you had to expose it to ultraviolet light. Okay, so give me a moment and I'll just show you what that, that particular device is. Okay, what we have here is an EEPROM. And if you look, you'll notice that in the center it has a little quartz window, a clear window. Why? Because that makes the part erasable, meaning once it's programmed, in order to erase it and put new data into it, you have to expose it to high-intensity ultraviolet light using a special device called an EEPROM eraser. Okay, this is uh, the original memory technology. And although this is uh, a newer uh, version of uh, EEPROM compared to the original ones that came out in the late 1970s, um, You'll notice that it has, uh, in this case, uh, 14 pins on each side. So this is a 28-pin part, 28-pin dip part. I'm going to, going to describe briefly what the pins do so you can just have that information. All right. Um, the majority of the pins are called address pins. And the address pins uh, allow individual bytes, which are contained in the memory array of the, the EEPROM, to be basically selected or pointed to. Okay. Um, the address is something that's important for you to understand. Then there are uh, eight other pins, which are the data pins, and those data pins allow the information which is in the memory array to come out of the, uh, the chip itself. And also, when it's being programmed, those data pins allow information to be uh, introduced to the EEPROM memory array, and that's how you program it. Uh, EEPROMs are uh, programmed with a, uh, a relatively high voltage compared to the normal operating voltage, which is 5 volts. And there are some other pins. There's a pin called uh, Chip Enable, which basically wakes the chip up. There's a pin called Output Enable, uh, which uh, basically gates the data from the memory array onto the, the microprocessor bus so that it can be read and then executed. And then there's the power pins, which are uh, VDD or incorrectly labeled VCC in many cases and ground. Okay, so this is, the reason I'm pointing this out is this is kind of where it started. Okay, and the big issue with which um, the engineers, especially the engineers that were designing microprocessor-based systems, had to contend was once this part is programmed, there's no way to introduce new data to it other than to take it out and erase it. So they were looking for uh, a technology which would give them the opportunity to basically introduce data while the system was active. Um, therefore, uh, parameters could be read and stored without the need to remove the part, erase the part, or program the part, which obviously would have been an untenable, untenable situation. So um, let's move on to the technology that uh, solved that and the technology on which this uh, this presentation is going to be based. Okay, this part is an EEPROM, or as I refer to them, double EEPROMs. Okay, the double EEPROM, if you can see, it's the same size, physical size in this particular case. Both of these parts store 8,192 bytes of information. Um, However, the double EEPROM has the uh, feature where you can introduce new data to it while it's on, and you can change the data, read the data, and that makes it a, uh, a very, very useful component. However, you will see that this part also has a large number of pins, same number of pins as the, the EEPROM. 
but you'll also see that it's missing something else, missing the window, okay? And the way that this works is that the double EEPROM generates its own high voltage on the silicon of the memory array itself. So you don't have to have an external power supply, an external high voltage supply like you do in the case of an EEPROM in order to alter the data in the memory array. Makes these parts, when, the, when these became basically uh, arrived on the market, uh, electrical engineers, microprocessor uh, designers, people that were designing uh, intelligent systems um, had the solution that they had been looking for for a long, long time, okay? Because before these were uh, uh, available, if an engineer had to create a system which stored data dynamically, okay, meaning that they had to store data from some system on the fly, they would literally take a, a, RAM, a RAM chip, RAM is a, uh, means random access memory, and they would put a battery on it. So you would have a battery backed up a RAM chip, and if the battery failed, the chip would lose its, its contents. Okay, but that was the technology that was used to address before the EEPROMs uh, became available for the engineer. Okay, so at this point uh, in time, um, these particular components uh, served very well and allowed uh, engineers to design many, many types of, uh, of equipment that could retain their information. And the double EEPROM, once it's programmed, you can take power away and it doesn't forget. So it, uh, it really was um, a remarkable uh, advance in technology. But you can see it has a significant disadvantage, and that is it still has the same number of pins as the EEPROM. Okay, and in this case, it has the same address pins, data pins, control pins, but it has a pin where um, the EEPROM does not have it. Uh, it has a pin called write. And when the microprocessor system decides it wants to write data into the double EEPROM, it activates the write line, provides the address and data, and information is then written into the, the memory array of the, of the EEPROM part. Okay, well, as time passed um, and systems became smaller and more complex, the uh, engineers that were looking to design systems were um, interested in uh, EEPROM parts which did not take up you know this much space. They did not have uh, as many physical requirements as these two components which you see here have. So the result was the primary focus of this this uh, presentation and that is the uh, the 8 pin EEPROM. So let me get one of those. All right, so as time progressed, um, the engineers found that in uh, many applications, they did not need uh, a, the, abil the, the ability to store um, large amounts of information, okay? Especially in like vehicle applications and uh, um, the other um, applications where the microprocessor or the microcontroller was, uh, you know, performing activities where it really didn't need to store massive amounts of data. So the, the semiconductor manufacturers respond to that, and this is uh, the, the first family of, uh, of what's called a serial EEPROM. Okay, the EEPROM technology, the, the erasable programmable read-only memory technology that you saw in the previous the previous components is still in this particular part, but it's got many, many fewer pens. It's only got eight pens. Okay, so uh, why? Why does it only have eight pens? Okay, well, the, the big reason that the engineers uh, like these parts is because they don't take up a lot of uh, real estate, and you don't have to have a lot of signals available to control them, okay? but they're, they're referenced by a different name. The previous parts were called parallel parts. Okay, parallel meaning the address information, the data information uh, had to come all the bits simultaneously. Okay, 
that means you had to have tracks going to all of those pens. And the advantage of that is that it's very fast, but the disadvantage is you have all of those pens that are required to be active in order for the part to function properly. Well, with an 8-pen double EEPROM, you still have to have uh, address and data and control, but it's not parallel. It's serial. And these are referred to as serial EEPROMs. Okay, so the eight pens, uh, you have uh, one for power, one for ground, you've got one for data in, one for data out, and you have one for basically what's called the clock signal. And although I'm not going to go into the, the technical details of that, when you want to send an address to access a specific byte on this particular type of part, you have to send in all of the bits one at a time. Okay, and then once the address, the byte that the address has uh, selected um, is available, then you have to uh, basically bring the, the, the bits that represent that byte out one bit at a time. Okay, so the advantage is that you don't have to have but a couple of pens necessary in order to uh, access the information that's in the part or put new information into the part. Okay, well, why, why is that important? Well, if you're an engineer and you're designing a product, and the, uh, the microcontroller, which is, uh, if, you, if you look at an assembly, microcontrollers have lots of pins surrounding but typically their four sides. Okay, well, if you needed to dedicate all of those pins to basically addressing or controlling a, an external uh, uh, EEPROM, then you wouldn't have those pins available to do other things like sense inputs, sense outputs, um, fire fuel injectors, that kind of stuff. Okay, but if you have a serial double EEPROM, you only need three or four lines in order to, to control the data. The downside is that they're not as fast as parallel parts. But in many cases, doesn't really make that much difference because you're not sending the information to it or reading information from it uh, at a high rate of speed anyway. Okay, the other thing that, that um, the engineers found, as I said before, they didn't need to have access to... Uh, store huge amounts of data. So this particular part is a 93LC56. Um, the 93 family was the first family of, of double EEPROM to be available for the engineering community. Um, and the 93LC56, 93C56 uh, stores 256 bytes. Okay, so that is not a huge amount of storage, but if you're storing things like mileage, if you're storing things like uh, the VIN, vehicle VIN, um, it's fine. Or if you have like key sequences and things like that, this particular component gives you the opportunity as an engineer to just plop it down on your circuit assembly and store that information. Um, and uh, that way you've solved a problem which has kind of been the, the bane of, of, uh, of early engineers for quite some time. Okay, so that's a brief history of uh, where we've come from. Also, the, the packages that I've shown you are called DIP packages. DIP stands for dual inline package, and that means that the legs on these parts go through the board. Okay, so you can see from the side here that uh, the pins go down and they go through the board. Well, you don't encounter these too often any longer because the industry has pretty much transitioned to, to surface mount components. So, uh, those are, are what we're going to be uh, showing you with our, our uh, ongoing uh, demonstration with our, our tutorial. But um, that's, a, that's a brief history and an explanation as to why these parts exist and where they came from. So give me a moment and we'll move on to uh, uh, the rest of uh, what I wanted to, uh, to uh, demonstrate. Okay, I would hear a lot from automotive locksmiths and automotive technicians. Um, they are focused on fixing cars and, and uh, making keys, and they hear about EEPROMs. Um, some have chosen to uh, take it upon themselves to, to learn about them, but uh, as far as EEPROM training goes, uh, 
because there are so many different kinds of, uh, of programming tools out there, um, there really isn't a, uh, a concise training course simply because the training course has got to uh, be uh, aligned with the functionality of the tool. So um, what we do with our products, and this, this is uh, both of our, of our automotive kits and both of our locksmith kits, um, we provide a, uh, a training tutorial, a serial EEPROM tutorial based on a 93C56, which is a, a very common serial EEPROM part, which you will uh, encounter when you work on a lot of different vehicle modules. Okay, so what I want to show you is what we provide, and then I'm going to hook it up and I'm going to do a, a, a bit of a demonstration as to what. Um, you would receive in terms of training if you acquire uh, one of our kits. Okay, these the, the training tutorial is included with with all of our kits. Okay, because our our goal in, in providing a product for our customers is to train you on how to use it. Okay, there's no no sense in selling you a product and not provide a, a, a path for you to learn how to use it. And when you're doing this kind of work you're not doing OBD2 kind of work. Okay, this kind of work allows you to deal directly with the memory parts that are in the module. And uh, hopefully in the next, uh, in the future, we'll have a, um, another video on EEPROM work and what that is and why it's different. But um, let me uh, proceed and just uh, show you what, what we provide. Okay, let me pause this and I'm going to zoom in on our part. Okay, this is the uh, 93C56 tutorial part. It's an actual component, a real part. Um, we've had some people that when they purchase our products and they, they uh, pull the tutorial out, they go, well, that's a really good picture of a, of a EEPROM. Yeah, it's so good it's three-dimensional. It's actually an actual real part. Um, and the reason we provide that, this part is programmed with actual automotive data. Okay, there are VIN, VIN numbers here, there's mileage here, there are PIN numbers here. Um, and all of that is included because when you do the tutorial that we provide, we teach you by actual hands-on uh, exercises. It's the best way to learn and it's the way, without that, you're kind of you know, you've got a tool and you don't really know how to use it. So, um, let me now uh, ex go through what, what we provide in the tutorial and then once I, I show you that, then I'm gonna hook up to the part and you can see uh, exactly how the tutorial works. I'm not gonna do all the exercises in the tutorial, that would take a long time. Uh, but this is not a small document and a lot of work went into it and its goal is to, once you do it, um, whether you're an automotive technician or an automotive locksmith, you'll understand the fundamental operation of uh, the, our system, and, but you'll also understand the uh, operation and organization of the information that's in the EEPROM, what it means, and all of that. So um, let me uh, uh, get started here, and we'll, uh, we'll begin. Okay, this is page one of the tutorial. Um, basically, the first part of it uh, describes how to attach it to the programmer, which I will do uh, once I go through these pages. Um, I also went through these pages in our very, very first uh, video, which was <laughs> not as professional as we would have liked, but it did get the point across. It's uh, our automotive locksmith kit, one what's in the box. Um, but anyway, we talk about uh, hooking it up to the program. We talk about getting started. Um, and then if you look here, this is a, this uh, the way that our, our system is organized. It's uh, it's a Windows compatible program, but it's not a Windows only program. So that allows us to uh, to create uh, uh, educational information that um, since we we are in control of the programmer, we are also in control of the tutorial and the education. So therefore, um, if you have a, another programming tool, this tutorial is not going to help you. Okay, this is this is uh, 
created for our product. I mean, the information is going to be the same, but the commands that we have, the operation that we use, the way that our system works, is not like some of the limited capabilities of, of, uh, of other tools. Okay, so uh, I just want to make you aware that um, this tutorial is not going to be adequate if you're considering uh, using it with uh, another kind of uh, a programmer. Okay, so basically on this page we have the uh, main screen and switch settings, which if you've watched our other videos, we've that's described. And then we talk about um, the buffer, uh, what the buffer is, and how the buffer works, and why the buffer exists. And we also uh, show you, using commands of the system, um, how to do things. this page we have uh, changing data, we have entry base uh, hex. What does it mean? Well, um, do you know why we use hex? Uh, most people don't. They just look at those two bytes in a, in a big field of data and go, wow, there's, there's hex data on the screen. Okay, well there's a reason that we use hex and uh, we describe why we use hex. Um, we teach that to you. Okay, we also teach you about binary and we teach you about ASCII, and we teach you about addresses, and we teach you about data. And the whole purpose of that is so that you understand um, when you're looking at a screen of data, what that data means. Um, so it's, it's, it's our attempt to introduce to you, build your educational foundation um, as to uh, you know, how the, the internal operation of the, uh, the memory array works, and what, the, what those bytes mean, and what is a byte? What is hex? What is binary? And then um, the next page we have ASCII, a brief history lesson. Yes, okay, ASCII, which is if you look at most programmers, the, the information display is organized um, similar to ours, where you've got hexadecimal data, which is the uh, dominant area of the screen. Then you have this area over here. Okay, why? Why is this here? Okay, this is the ASCII pane. Well, what's the point of putting it up there? Well, we teach it to you. We teach you why that exists, where it came from, and what you can do with it. Why many times it's a whole lot easier to do editing, like VIN editing, things like that, in the ASCII pane than it is over here in this massive uh, uh, pane of, of hexadecimal data. Okay, so we, we educate you about that. So you understand where ASCII came from and how and when it's best to, uh, to work with it in its native mode. Okay, so the next page is, are the functions that the, uh, the editor allows you to do. Not all of them, because if we covered every editor function in the tutorial, we would overwhelm you with, with stuff. But the editor, we allow you to do so many more things than, than other products, all right? And if you watch some of our other videos, you watched me do a function like, uh, in, this, in this case, uh, Quick View, okay? Quick View lets you basically pull information directly from the part and put it on the screen without reading it into the buffer. It's really nice um, if you want to know if you're connected to the part. Then we have the Get Validated command, which you've also seen if you've watched our other videos. And we have programming exercise, we have a command called write. All right, the write command lets you take information from anywhere in the buffer and put it anywhere in a part. All right, it's not just most, most tools you program. You read and you program, that's what you do. Our tool, you can read and program, obviously, but you can also say I'd like to take uh, these six bytes from this location and put them into these six bytes inside the part. All right. And we also have the ability to do what's called a zone read, where you can say, I'd like to pull these, the string of bytes from the part, and only the string of bytes from the part, and read it into the buffer at an address that I specify. So those are some of the things that, that, uh, that we teach you. All right, and then we have uh, the write command, working with files, followed by save the buffer to a disk file, uh, which you've, if you've watched the other videos that, uh, that we've done, um, You've seen that work, programming red disk file. Those are also, uh, uh, that's also covered in our other videos. Um, and then we have automotive exercises. Okay, so the first half of the tutorial is teaching you how to use the system, 
how to use the fundamental commands to do the things that are available to you. And um, given that, you are ready once you begin working directly with modules, you're not sitting there going, gosh, what do I do? Okay, the, the, the tutorial trains you, uh, teaches you how to use the system before you need to use the system. All right, and as I said, we give you a pre-programmed part, so you get to do this with a real part. So one of the things about our product, if you, if you choose to, to, uh, to purchase it, you can play with it out of the box. Okay, you don't need to go get a module. You can actually, you can actually uh, uh, learn and do exercises and see results um, right after you get it and attach it to a host machine. So that's something else that we provide. Okay, the first half of the tutorial teaches you how to use the system. The second half of the tutorial, uh, if you look down at the bottom, says automotive exercises and the librarian. Okay, well the automotive exercises are just that. Okay, whether you're a locksmith or an automotive technician, we teach you with actual screens of data where things are like VIN numbers and mileage. Um, we have a digital cluster exercise, okay? So these are there to teach you specifically about how to work with automotive modules and these screens come from the data that's in the double EEPROM which is part of your tutorial. Okay, so you do, will do a digital cluster exercise with the data that's on that tutorial chip. All right, then we have a VIN number edit exercise followed by an immobilizer pin number extraction. Again, all of these screens are from uh, the information which is contained in the EEPROM that we provide with the with the tutorial, okay? Then we have uh, system librarian, how to copy data from one ECU to another, okay, that's uh, here. Then we have uh, how to clear airbag crash data. Yes, you can actually clear airbag crash data, and we have an exercise which shows you how to do that. Now the airbags that we support have to be based on EE prompts. Okay, um, there are airbag modules which do not use uh, an 8-pin EEPROM. About 85% of airbag modules do, but they don't all. Okay, so this tutorial, this uh, exercise is based on the 8-pin uh, EEPROM uh, airbag modules. But we show you how to uh, access the data, clear the data, program the data back, and then once that's in, you can install the, the airbag module into the vehicle. All right, and the last thing, is to use the librarian to reflash vehicle immobilizers. Okay, if you've watched our video on um, reflashing Toyota Lexus, this basically describes that. Okay, but you actually, in this case, you do it. All right, so those are all of the things that are included with the training document with the double EEPROM that is uh, part of this, um, this package. So after you do all of that, after you have gone through and, and performed all of the, the exercises, uh, we hope that you are ready then to move forward and uh, uh, do the work directly on a module. So I'll tell you what, let me hook up the, uh, the programmer and the in-circuit adapter and the clip and show you what it's like to read the data from the part that's on this tutorial. Okay, before I do that, uh, I want to show you something else real quick. Um, this is another document that we provide, which um, there are, uh, in essence, multiple families. There's th three standard families of double E which you will encounter, and there, there are different kinds of packages, okay? So we don't want to leave you hanging going, okay, well, that was great. You taught me all about the 93C family, but what about the other families? Okay, well, that's what this document is for. This document has uh, pictures and descriptions of the other members of the family. We tell you how to identify them. Um, and also the different kind of packages. There's the DIP package, there's the SOIC package, there's the TSSOP package, uh, and we tell you which of our connection options um, are required in order to, uh, to attach to those packages. And we also tell you about uh, uh, parts which look like double E prompts but are not double E prompts, okay? And how to identify those so you don't spend your time trying to read something which doesn't have any data in it. 
and also uh, our system, the kit kit number kits number two, both automotive and locksmith kits number two, support Motorola microcontrollers. So that's what this describes is the Motorola microcontroller. So I wanted you to be aware that this document is included to give you guidance when it comes to locating um, those parts. And lastly, we're going to be dealing with our in-circuit um, uh, adapter, which you are going to watch me install in a programming unit. And this is the uh, document which describes that and how to use it. I just wanted to show you that these are the three pieces that are uh, included in order to assist you in, in not only uh, setting up and using the system, but becoming proficient with it. All right, let's uh, get the programmer set up, put the in-circuit adapter in, and we're going to read the, the tutorial double EEPROM. All right, here's the uh, AR32A programming unit. Again, we've got it attached to a Panasonic Toughbook CF31. Uh, and um, what I want to show you first is, uh, well, let me address something else that a couple of people asked about. They asked, what are these two blacks, black lines here? Okay, well, we um, power our product from an external power supply. All right, we don't run it off of a USB port because USB doesn't many times give you enough current to do anything in circuit. So those two slots are where the blades of the wall adapter, the US domestic wall adapter, go into the, the foam. So when you put the domestic adapter in and you lay it down flat, the blades go in here and you close the lid and it holds it in place. So that's what those are. So anyway, um, the next step we're going to, uh, to do is I'm going to switch over to the computer and start the software and um, you'll see that, uh, that work. Okay, here we are at the computer screen, and to run our software, you double-click the EEPROM Plus icon. It's called the EEPROM Plus system because it does a lot more than EEPROMs, but it started its life, although it's been enhanced significantly over its, uh, its life, uh, supporting EEPROMs from back when Jimmy Carter was president. So we do those, we do automotive stuff, we do copy machine stuff. Um, but that's why it's called the EEPROM Plus system, and that's why this uh, icon is what it is. It's a picture of an EEPROM with a yellow window. So we're going to double click it, and our software will start. And this is the device selection table. Okay, these are all the parts that the system supports. Um, and again, we're a Windows compatible program. We are not a Windows only program, and you can run our product without Windows. So I want to make that clear. There's a video we did on that if you're interested in that. And if you want to see all the parts that we support in different families, um, I'm just going to page down through all of them so you can see. And you'll notice something else about our software. We don't make you know who made the part. Okay. There's so many uh, uh, manufacturers of, of tools today, and they expect you to know whether the part was made by um, Fairchild, ST, uh, Microchip. And you're looking at the little 8-pin double EEPROM and you're lucky if it has the whole part number printed on it. Okay, so we don't make you do that. The, the algorithms that we use work with anybody's part, um, and that allows you to not be concerned with trying to figure out who the heck made the part. So um, the tutorial, as it says at the top, is a 93C56, all right? So where it says enter device type, I'm going to type 93C56, and I'm going to press enter, and you're going to see the screen come up. Um, on the left-hand side is the programming unit switch. Yes, we use a dip switch to configure the programming unit for the different families. And on the right-hand side, it says, requires adapter ASC or SM1A or ASC or EE2, which the or EE2 was our original adapter. Uh, it only does dip parts and 5 volts. It does not have uh, variable voltage. And then we say plug or device position left. Okay, well let me switch over to the uh, programming unit and we'll put the adapter in. Alright, here we are back at the programming unit. Here is the in-circuit adapter. And in order to insert it, let me set the switch according to the diagram. 2, 3, and 5 up. Okay, that's the switch. The switch on the programming unit is now set, and you put the adapter in all the way to the left, 
okay and now we are ready to uh, attach the uh, the clip I'm going to use the clip for this demonstration since that's what's going to would come with the uh, uh, the, the the kit all right and the uh, clip is right here and you'll notice that we have three headers we have the uh, the 93XX header which is the first family we have the uh, 2595 uh, header and then we have the 24 header okay these are the three families of double EEPROM with which you will uh, you'll typically encounter in your work alright and that was one of the reasons that we picked the 93C56 in order to uh, uh, do our tutorial because it's widely um, it's a widely used part okay so um, let me put the uh, the plug from the clip onto the 93XX headers brown wire on the right okay that's the way that our plug goes on regardless of which connection option you use and now let me get the tutorial and we'll hook up the clip Okay, here we are back to the tutorial. I have attached the clip to the part, and I'm going to tell you that when you're doing this, I would suggest you not leave the part. Um, we attach it to the box on the first page of the tutorial so you can find it. But in order for you to do this uh, exercise, it's better to have it off. So it's 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 uh, easier just to to uh, remove the um, the part from the paper and put the clip on it, and that way you can be free to. Uh, uh, have a little more freedom to move around without this thing being glued to the paper. But anyway, I'm, I'm leaving it on the paper so you can see it. And now I'm going to go back to the computer screen. Okay, and we're going to uh, go to the buffer editor, which is Command 5. And I'm going to press the G command, which is get validated. And this is all in the tutorial, is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to press G. It's going to read the part and compare the part. And if you look on the right hand side, there's our test file. Okay, it says Andromeda Research Test File, 256 bytes, 93C56 EE Prom. And then here is the data, okay, and here is the ASCII data, ASCII, pan, ASCII panel, and this is where you will work. This is where you will learn to do things, all right? So I'm going to do a few things just to show you how this works, all right? Um, so you can understand why the hands-on aspect of learning is so beneficial for you. All right. Um, I did not reference all of the commands in the in the tutorial simply for time's sake. But um, let me go ahead now, and while we're on this screen, let's uh, use the the clear data command. Okay. So we're going to press C, and all of our commands are invoked with a, a single letter. Okay, so basically C for clear. And if you press C a second time, the data will go away. Now, I did mention in the, uh, the tutorial description about the quick view command. Okay, well, here we have the, the information from the device. And one of the things that we teach you is um, what are these over here? Okay, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0. Okay, you'll notice I'm not saying 40, 50, 60, because that's not what they are. These are hexadecimal values. Okay, so it's 4, 0. It's not 40. It's not line 40. It's line 4, 0. Okay, this is a byte. This is an address. So this byte is at address 0. That's why it says 0. This is a one zero. This byte is an address one zero. Okay, now we teach you all about that, what addresses mean, what data means, what the bytes mean, what binary means. That's all included in our tutorial. Okay, but now I'm going to use the quick view command, and this information is in the buffer. And as I said, the buffer is described what its purpose is in the tutorial. But if you want to know if you're connected to the part, and I'm still connected to the part on the paper, I'm going to press Q. And you'll notice it says at the top of the screen, device contents. Okay, so it's not the actual data from the, it's the actual data from the EEPROM, but it's on the screen, it's not in the buffer. Okay, so if you wanted to know if you were connected to the part, just put the clip on it, you press Q, and there 
there's your information. If you're not connected to the part, well, then you're going to see a screen of Fs. All right. So that's the quick view command. Okay. Let's get, let's bring the data back in from the uh, the double EEPROM. All right. So we're going to say get valid data. There's the data. It's back. Now let's do uh, just a couple of simple things, which uh, uh, we would will teach you in the in the tutorial. Okay. We're going to modify some data. Okay. So I'm going to press M for modify, and I'm going to go to address uh, 70. Let's go to address 70. All right, when you do that, enter 70, we press M, press 70, press enter, you get a reverse video cursor. Okay, and again, you can do all this without Windows, and use the arrow keys and you move around, and you'll notice in the block cursor here is moving over these two A's. But if you look over in the ASCII panel, you'll see there's a block cursor there moving over the uh, the asterisk. Huh. I wonder why that is. Okay, so in this case, um, let's just change these two A's to five fives. Okay, so to change the two A to a five five, all we have to do is press five five. Okay, and you'll notice that the, uh, the byte value at that location changed. So let's go back to the beginning here and do 5-5, five, 5-5-5. Five, 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 five. We already did that 5-5, five, five, so we'll skip over. We'll make this one an AA. Okay, and if you look up here, this is what we call the edit window. Okay, this shows you the address and this shows you the data. All right, so as you move around, you can see that the... Um, the edit window and the value at that particular address is displayed and then you can make the modifications that you that you choose. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to do is I, I referenced the write command uh, earlier, so let's do the write command. And what the write command lets you do is write a specific series, everything from a single byte to, you know, basically you can write the whole, the whole uh, part if you choose to do that. But we're going to write the uh, the four bytes that we just changed into the EEPROM in the part. Okay, but first let's do this. Let's get out of the modify. Let's press quick view. You can see that we have the data in the part is the same as it was originally. Okay, so but the data in the buffer is different. All right, because we just changed it. So let's say write, and you need three parameters for the write command. So we press W for write. We need to know where to start, so we're going to start at device address 70. We need to know where to end, so we're going to end at device address 73. Okay, that's four bytes. Zero through three is four, four bytes. And where do we want to start? Well, we're going to start at buffer address 70, so we're going to start here, so we're going to say 70. All right, so those are the three parameters we need for the write command. We press enter. Programming complete data verified correct. So what we've just done is we've written these four specific bytes into the double EEPROM at address 70. Okay, well, did that really happen? Well, how do we find out? Let's check with the quick view command. All right, quick view. Oh, it, it appears as though nothing has changed because the data that was there before, which was the original file, has now been written using the write command into the double EEPROM. So you can see that this is a a really uh, powerful command which lets you do detailed byte operations on the data in the part. Now we could have written this data anywhere, we just happened to write it back where it was, okay? But let's go ahead and uh, change it back to what it was before, all right? So I'm going to use the modify command and I'm going to go to address 70, press enter, and there's my uh, my pointer cursor, but in this, this time we're going to use the ASCII pane. Okay, if you look over here, we also have a block cursor, which is on the over uh, showing a U. Okay, well, what is a U? The U is the ASCII character, which is um, created with a hexadecimal five five. All right, and as, as I said, we teach you all about this, about ASCII, about hex, and all of that. But that's what that is. So, so what I want to do, I want to work in the ASCII pane because it's a lot easier for me if I'm dealing with uh, values, ASCII values, like a VIN to type the letters right on the keyboard than it is for me to go and enter the hex codes. Okay, so down here it says entry base equals hex. Tab the change. So I'm going to press tab and now entry base is ASCII. Okay, so since it's ASCII, all I have to do, I don't have to type the two A's, all I have to type is the asterisk key. So I'm going to hold down shift 
goes asterisk is shift eight, then I'm going to go asterisk, 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 asterisk. And now we have restored the file to its original form, and I'm going to put it back into the part. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to use the right command to put it back into the original part. I'm just going to uh, use uh, the program uh, device from Buffer. So all I have to say is two and yes. Okay, and now the part has uh, been restored to its uh, its initial condition. Um, okay, program window set no. I'm going to show you another uh, another feature of the uh, the editor. This is not in the tutorial, but I also wanted to show you that since the editor has um, lots of commands, uh, things you can do that other other tools do not let you do. Um, show you how to access those. So in any event, you want to know whether or not something is possible. All you have to press, if you look down here, it says question mark for command. So if you press the question mark key, here's a summary of all the commands in the buffer editor. Okay, and they're all invoked with a single letter. So you have byte swap, clear, display, single byte program. Yes, you can program a single byte if you want to do that. Fill, get validated, hexadecimal inspect, blah, 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 blah. And there's two pages of these. Okay, so over time we've added commands to do just about anything you can think that you might want to do with respect to bits and bytes in the buffer. Okay, so I wanted to make you aware of that just in case you thought you would not be able to reference uh, information about how to use the buffer editor. It's right there. It's right there on the buffer editor. All right, I'm going to show you a couple of more things and then we're going to be done. Um, I'm going to modify a couple of bytes here. Let's just go and uh, choose modify. Let's do uh, 7, 8. Address 7, 8. Okay. 2A, I'm going to change these 2A to 7, 7 and 7, 8. I'm going to change them to uh, 5, 5 and 5, 4. Okay. Uh, those are, if you look down here, those are ASCII, the ASCII letter U, uppercase U and uppercase T. Okay. But I've, I've changed them. Now, if I wanted to know whether or not any bytes uh, that were in the buffer are different than bytes in the device, all I have to do, I have a, a command called inspect. So the inspect command allows you to specify a starting address in the buffer and a starting address in the part. So I'm going to use, the, they're going, going to be the same since this is only a 256 byte part. I'm going to say inspect. I'm going to say it started address zero in the buffer and start at address zero in the part. Let me know if anything is different. Press enter and yes. Okay. The inspect command says that the two A's, these are the values that are in the part. They're not the values that are in the buffer. Okay. And the same are reflected over here. So it's a convenient way to see where differences are in the part versus the buffer. All right. So that's the inspect command. You can also use, if you choose to do this command eight, which is compare device with buffer, uh, I'll just do that real quick and show you. You can say Command-8, compare device, yes. Oh, we have two errors. Well, where might those er errors be? Well, examine errors, yes. Okay, the first one is at buffer address 5 or 7, 7. Buffer is 5, 5, and the device is AA. Okay, so we hit C to continue, and the next one is at uh, buffer address uh, 7, 8, and the device is 2A. Okay, so that means that the data in the buffer is different than the data in the device, and you can see those differences. All right, we're going to uh, escape, exit that, and now let's go ahead and uh, and change these back. So, let's say modify 7, 7. Uh, I'm not going to go to do the ASCII pan. I'm just going to go to A, 2A. And then we're going to go to command two, which is program device from buffer. And there, the 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 device has been restored to the, its original original uh, uh, contents. All right, one more thing, then we'll be done. Let's say you wanted to extract a VIN from the uh, data in a double EEPROM. Okay. Well, in in our training tutorial, we have the VIN which is, or several VINs, we have two right here. Okay, so here's a VIN, um, and it ends here. All right, well, where, what's this location? Well, we see it's on line B0, so let's just say modify B0 and use the modify command as a pointer, 
and we look up in the edit window and we find that the starting character for the VIN is at B4, address B4. All right. Now we'll just go down and to the end of the VIN. Just, I just pressed the down arrow key. That's how I got there. Okay, the ending address for the VIN is on uh, is uh, address C4, and it's just a, th a three nine. Now let's say we wanted to extract just that VIN from this double EEPROM. All right, we have a command called zone read. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a zone read, and first I'm going to clear the data from the buffer. Okay. So the buffer is now, uh, in essence, empty. FFs are, uh, that's the character that you see. Uh, basically, FFs are, are all ones. Each byte uh, is all ones. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to read the, the data from the, or read the VIN from the double EEPROM. Because if I press Q, there's the double EEPROM. So let's, let's just read that VIN, and that's all we're going to read. We're not going to read the whole double EEPROM, just that specific series of bytes. So I'm going to press Z for zone read. Enter device starting address, well that was B4. Enter device ending address, well that was C4. Okay. Enter buffer starting address. Okay, where do I want to put this in the buffer? Well, that would depend on what your application is, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that VIN right here starting at address 80. Okay, so I'm going to say 80 and I'm going to press enter and it's going to say read and I'm going to say yes. And you will see that the VIN has now been extracted from the double EEPROM and placed into the buffer at the address where I specified. Once again, this is a feature of our tool that other tools do not have. Okay, they do not let you do this level of work. So in the event that you want to do individual byte work, individual bit work, move data around, uh, write data, um, other tools, you program, you read, you fill, you compare. That's pretty much it. All right, with our tool, you've got a lot of options. Okay, I can tell you what, let's put this back, go back to the buffer. Um, let's press Command G. There's the data from the double EEPROM again. So all we did before we extracted it and we put it, uh, loaded it into the buffer at a specific address. So that pretty much uh, wraps up um, what I wanted to show you in this training demonstration. Um, again, if you are uh, interested in our, uh, our products, we are always happy to talk with you. Um, again, our products are, they're different. They uh, are designed to, to give many, many years of, of, uh, of service life, okay? Um, in order to accomplish that, we have allowed them to work outside of Windows because Windows is, is like the shifting sands of the Sahara. It's always changing and sometimes things work and sometimes things don't. Um, sometimes things that used to work stop working after an update. And with our product, you can always make it work. If you have a, uh, a suitable host machine, it'll it'll play on machines on almost any machine. So you can run it, you know, as I've said in, in the videos, the other video that we have uh, on uh, on YouTube. You can see it work in Windows and outside of Windows. So uh, again, that wraps us up. Um, we thank you for watching. Uh, again, if you're interested in our products, we would always be happy to speak with you on the phone or by email. And uh, as uh, I've said before, um, information is uh, on our products is available on our website, which is airlabs.com. And we thank you for watching.